Hello, everybody. This is Jahan with Moonwise Counseling and Life Hacking coming at you with another video of some body tricks that you can use to help calm down your nervous system, de stress yourself, and just in general have a little bit more enjoyment of your life experience with all the craziness that goes on. And the world is a crazy place right now. Um, without going into details about any of it, because with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of social media, this stuff comes at us nonstop. Um, and it's heartbreaking. No matter what your relationship is to it or how you feel about it, the reality that we live in a time and a place where there are more empty homes than there are homeless people, uh, that there is war all over the planet, poverty, greed, just, you know, general human fuckery. Uh, yeah, I know not everybody likes swear words. Sorry, but I like to call stuff what it is. And to me, there's really only one word for it. And that is human fuckery. And uh, so goes reality. So on that note, um, one of the things that I do to help myself uh, be able to live with reality and the full truth of it, the full story of it, because it's not all bad either. There are some really amazing things also happening in the world. Um, you know, from my perspective, Black Lives Matter movement is an incredible thing happening in the world right now, unfortunately, in response to human fuckery. Uh, and that is the whole story is that, you know, the amazing things often come out of these really terrible things that are happening. Um, so examples of people going out of their way to be, you know, incredibly generous. Um, Brazil granting, oh God, I forget how many thousands of uh, visas and citizenship papers to people trying to escape from Syria, um, which of course this country has let in fewer than the amount of an urban high school. Think about that for a second. Um, yeah, so a lot of stuff going on in the world, bringing myself back as usual. So today what we're going to look at is how to create a closed energy system in our body. So a lot of what happens and how we end up getting stressed out and not even quite being aware of it is that everything is interconnected. You know, like I was saying about the fact that there is a full story to everything that goes on. So you have an event, you know, like the, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think a fine example right now would be the death of and the murder of Tamir Rice. Um, so you have a horrible thing happening, but in response to that, you have some other horrible things. So all the people trying to justify the death of a 12 year old boy, uh, by police and by not only police, but just grown people with government authority to be able to shoot, to kill and the ways that they chose to exercise the authority given to them. And the fact that there are plenty of people who see nothing wrong with that. And that's very scary, uh, especially for people who look like me and who have kids who look like me. That's terrifying. But on the flip side of that, as my finger comes back around, you have all of the amazing responses to this reality, which are people organizing and people talking, people sharing stories, people really, again, just getting real about what's happening because it's always been happening. This has been happening in this country ever since uh, this whole idea of race came about. Surely not going all into all of that backstory right now, but that there's a very long history to all of this and throughout all of it, especially within um, particularly marginalized and suppressed and oppressed and attacked communities, incredible resiliency incredible art, culture, and just 
magnificent displays of the human spirit and what it really means. Um, and actually, I don't want to say what it really means to be alive because everybody makes up the meaning of life for themselves, but what it can mean to be alive. So it doesn't always have to mean strife. It doesn't always have to mean war. It doesn't always have to mean competition. It doesn't always have to mean all of these really unpleasant things. It can also mean cooperation and love and peace and, uh, you know, ecstatic experiences with nature and other human beings and all of that too. So looking at what's possible and because everything is interconnected, so that full circle goes back around you get your ugly and your good. Um, when we're in environments with other people, our energy is impacted. So there's a lot of talk right now in the new age, sort of spiritual enlightenment community about, and it's actually, and it comes from a long thread within sort of religious and mindfulness conditions, which is this idea of complete self-control in that whatever's happening outside of you doesn't have to impact your insides. I really have mixed feelings about that because there is simply a biophysical level at which that is utterly delusional. I'm breathing air right now. I'm intimately connected to everything that's in my environment. If somebody in here were, you know, eating something that I'm allergic to, I would know. And there's nothing that I can do outside of leaving the room, which is an option. But you know what I mean? Where it's like, I can't not be impacted by that. So I think that the ways that that idea sort of gets talked about and perpetuated and repeated in culture is really oversimplified. And it's really about recognizing that actually I am deeply, deeply impacted by everything that is going on here. If somebody is you know, smoking three rooms away from here, that's in the building. And if somebody is lighting incense three rooms away from here on that side, that's also in the building. If somebody's meditating above me, their energy is going to come down and impact me. And sometimes, more often than not, unfortunately, because a lot of us don't get taught about how our energy systems work. And so not only do we not know how to manage them for ourselves, we don't know how to manage them with the reality of other people. So we're not sure how our energy is going out and impacting others. And because of that, sometimes it is a really good idea to just be like, okay, you know what? I know you're there. I just need to do me for a second. So that's what today's body technique is about. It's about creating a closed circuit of energy in your body so that you are being less impacted because you can't be just entirely not impacted, right? Like your choice to create a shell is a reflection of the impact that somebody else is having on you in that moment. You wouldn't need to do it if their energy was compatible with yours. And in that moment, it's not. So that's, you know, again, a reflection of how Everything is interconnected. You wouldn't even have this choice to make in the first place if we weren't. So what you want to do, and I'm going to back away a little bit so that you can see my whole body. And, oh, wait, I got to come back. I got to come back because you can't see my whole body yet. Hold on. Like I said, I told you in the last video, I'm really not about like video production. I appreciate aesthetics. I'm not here to be a video producer. I'm here to show you some things about how your body works. So on that note, what you want to do is you want to be sitting down for this one and you want to cross specifically your left foot over your right. So you want your ankles to be crossed left over right. And it is important that it be left over right because I, like I talked about last time, the left side of our body is is our inputting side and the right side is our outputting. So we receive things in this direction and send things back out in that direction. And so by crossing our left over our right, we've already started the signal that we're closed. We're not intaking things right now. Okay, so left over right. 
and get comfortable as always. It's never important to have like the posture that you probably think that you're supposed to have. What is important is that you be comfortable and that breath be easy for you. So if you, for your body, if that's a little bit slouchy, if that's a little bit like this, it might be a little bit to the side, depending on, you know, what else has happened to your life, how your body needs to adjust to be comfortable, whatever it is, do that and just find a place of comfort. And you want to settle into that. And last time we talked about how our fingers are these channels of energy and they all come out, uh, do a little pop, pop quiz, which is emotional grief and sadness, fear and shame, anger and resentment, preoccupation and worry, and our little peoples, how we see ourselves. And so what we're doing in this particular exercise is we're closing it off. So the same thing that we did with our legs in signaling with our left leg over our right that we are not interested in taking in whatever this energy is, we're also not sending our energy out either. And we're just keeping it in here. We're just keeping it in our own zone. And this is a great technique to use if you are especially women if you are somewhere in public, and I know this happens all the time, you're getting some weird energy from a man or a woman who is just like giving you the eye, but you're not really interested and they don't seem to be able to get the message. This is a great place to go. If you are sitting on BART and just like catching weird energy, just be like, okay, mm-hmm. That's happening. I'm not engaging with it. It's kind of like the Aikido principle of getting off the line, right? You're getting off somebody's energetic line when you're doing this because somebody is sending you energy and all you're doing is just saying, no, that's just going to go right by me. I'm not going to intercept it. I'm not going to try to stop it. I'm not going to try to do anything with it. I'm just going to deal with me. It's also really great to use in meetings, which is often a time that other people very unconsciously or consciously are trying to get you to do something with their energy, like the force of their energy. So that person who just always has to talk in meetings, even though they don't always have something productive or even relevant to say, but they have to talk because for them, that's a part of the way that they share energy. And, you know, it's not mine. It's not my preference, but it's also not good or bad. It just is the way that this person functions. And that's the way that they need to get their energy out to feel like they're involved and to feel like they're a part of what's going on. And I know for me as an introvert and somebody who tends to to be very self-regulating in my energy and very uh, discerning about what comes in and out of my field, that doesn't work very well for me. So a lot of times when I'm in meetings, I just end up feeling so stretched because that person has, you know, some energy that they're trying to send my way. And so does that person. And so does that guy. And so does she. And, you know, and it just is very overwhelming. And so this is, a place that I will go and just say, okay, again, it just creates a little bit of space between your energy and all of the energy that's trying to pull at yours so that you can have a little bit more, a sense of control and a little more at ease in feeling out what your options are for how you're going to respond and how you're going to deal with this. So and that is today's energy body trick. And I hope that this helps you out in the world. Um, I've been getting some really sweet responses to the finger hugs video. Um, one of the things that I do in the world right now is um, holding a participatory action research group about allyship uh, called Allies for Life. And 
I have a group of about five people who drive down to the Bay Area from Chico to participate, uh, which is really, really wonderful. And we had a tough discussion last week. Um, the groups met separately, so there's two groups, uh, one for people of color allies and one for white allies. And in the white allies meeting, of course, you know, a lot of very uncomfortable stuff was brought up and it wasn't particularly easier, I'll say, uh, because I am a black facilitator talking to a bunch of white people about what some of their cultural conditionings are that make it really difficult for me to exist in a way that uh, is comforting and easeful for me. And I shared the finger holds technique um, as a way of being able to hold equanimity and emotional balance when receiving feedback that's really difficult to hear. And one of the participants sent me an email and let me know that as they were kind of debriefing on their ride back to Chico, um, they were not only holding their own fingers, they were holding each other's fingers and that it really just allowed all of them to process and integrate everything that had happened so much more fully and with a lot more enjoyment and appreciation for it um, because their bodies weren't freaking out. Their bodies were able to be calm and that allowed their minds to be able to be calm along with it. So that just really, really warmed my heart because um, that's why I do what I do. I try to make it easier for you. So on that note, I'm gonna come out of my shell and move forward and turn this thing off so hopefully y'all can get to making your shells and protecting yourselves and guarding your energy when it is being pulled in too many different places at once because your energy is precious it's everything that you are it's everything that you have to give in this world so take care of it take care of yourselves and take care of the other energy beings around you I will see you um, potentially not next week, actually. Um, I will be in Costa Rica assisting um, with a nonviolent communication program that is all about utilizing your personal power to show up in the world, to really show up, to take all of those you know, background dreams that you have, all of those impulses and feelings that other people told you weren't important or actively told you were stupid and that you just shouldn't do. So getting all that stuff out of the way so that you can really do you. Um, last tangent, I swear, there's just, I'm sorry, I'm a third generation teacher. So it's like, everything I do is just like information, information. I want you to learn things. I want you to learn things all the time. Everything is a teachable moment. And it is. Um, <laughs> so last, last tangent on that, um, which is that um, showing up is a huge thing. And showing up for ourselves is a huge thing. And it's so important because biologically, again, you'll always hear me talk about things that like I talk about the spirit a lot and I talk about energy a lot. And I also talk about physical reality a lot because these things aren't actually distinct. It's one of our cultural uh, miseducations that we receive in thinking that any of these things is particularly distinct from any of the other things. Um, but Diversity is necessary. It is not a pretty idea. It is not some liberal, like, crockpot idea that somebody on Telegraph came up with and then decided to spread pamphlets to the rest of the world about what a good idea diversity was. Diversity is a physical, biological necessity. If you even think about your own body, you're not functioning without eyeballs an olfactory system, so that smell, uh, your ears to hear, your mouth to taste, your kidneys to process, your liver to process, your tonsil. We're not entirely sure what those things do, 
But, you know, your genitals, your fingers, your toes, all of those things are different. And you can't function without all of those things being different. Like, just think about what your life would be like if one day, well, I can't use the uterus because not everybody has a uterus. But okay, actually I can. Let's say one day, if you have testicles, that you just woke up with a uterus because your testicles were like, you know what? I'm done. I don't really feel like being testicles anymore. I've decided that I want to go be a uterus. Now, I realize that that can be like a triggering example because of all of the unfortunate and to me really heartbreaking shaming and violence that is done to people uh, in the name of basically just gender homogeneity and, you know, trying to enforce the exact opposite thing of what I'm talking about, which is to make everybody the same and fit into a box. And we don't need to do that. That's not healthy for anybody. And it's especially not healthy for us. So again, just protect yourselves, protect your energy and do you because that will help us all get free. All right. Peace.